right. Should be good to go. Let's see where this thing comes online. All right, cool. There we go. Now we should be streaming. So hopefully uh, you guys can see me, hear me, all good. Let me know if you're watching. Give me a thumbs up in the chat. <laughs> All right, so today we're going to talk about the seventh core issue. And this is the seventh out of 100 live videos in 100 days that I'm doing. So this is a, this is a full week. Hey, man, that's, uh, that's good progress. Okay, made it. I have succeeded so far. And I have no intention of failing. Because I have made this commitment. And when I make a commitment, I do my best to keep it and follow through. Why? Because I'm not a liar. When we covered lies in the fifth video, if you uh, remember that. If you haven't checked it out yet, definitely you should watch that one as becoming integrous is one of the most powerful things that we can do for ourselves. I mean, it frees up so much anxiety just knowing that you don't have to lie to yourself or to anyone else in order to be okay. But that brings us to today's topic, which is separation. Now, this topic has been called the core error of suffering upon which all other suffering is built. I forget where I heard that from, but I, I remember reading that a long time ago. It's kind of like basically going against the prime directive, which is that we are all one and that we all share this one life or that somehow we're all connected. Now, quantum science has actually proven this fact. I don't know how they did it. I'm not a scientist, but well, in a sense, I'm a scientist in that I, uh, I create experiments in my life and then I test them and I create hypotheses on which to test those theories and seek if I can prove them or disprove them. And then if I prove something over and over again enough times in my life, then I can accept it as fact and I can operate it uh, on that as a principle. So yeah, in a sense, no one can uh, call themselves a scientist in error as long as they adhere to those principles and are willing to have an open mind and examine the facts of their experiments and adjust accordingly. But nonetheless, quantum science, they've shown that every single atom, like every single subatomic particle even in this entire universe is inextricably and eternally linked to every other subatomic particle. So we are all connected. Everything is connected. In fact, this entire universe is just one thing that appears as many. And they talk about this in some of the great um, philosophies. And in those religions and philosophies, they talk about how all is one and that God, as it were, is just the one appearing as the many. It was said in a particular tantric text, I believe it's the Pratabhignya Hurdayam, that she peers through countless pairs of eyes, the same one. Talking about the divine form of the goddess Shakti, which is basically all energy, all manifestation. In the Hindu tradition, they call it Shakti, as opposed to Shiva, which is the consciousness. And the way they look at it is these two are not two, they're actually one. They can never be separate. But they're just different ways of viewing reality, we could say. Now, consciousness, that brings up an interesting topic because I've often made this, um, uh, this gamble with people. I've offered them a deal. And so far, no one's taken me up on this deal yet, but I'll offer it to anyone who's here watching and anyone who sees this in the future. I will make you an offer. What I will do for you is I will give you everything that you could possibly want. Everything. Anything past, future, present, not present, anything imaginable even, I will give it to you. And I'll only ask for one thing only in return. That's it. That one thing is your awareness your consciousness. So it's a trade. It's an even trade. You give me your awareness. So in other words, I'm going to take your awareness from you 
And in exchange for that, I'm going to give you a bountiful booty, a blessing and a boon of everything possible that you could ever want. Is it a good deal? Some people get confused by this. They're like, yeah, I'll take that deal. Because they don't understand what I'm talking about when I say, I want your awareness. They think I'm just saying, pay attention to me. No, <laughs> that's not what I'm saying. Yeah, great, pay attention to me. Sure, I'm speaking to you, right? But that's not what I'm saying. What I'm saying is it's a trade. You have to give me. In other words, you have to give up your awareness. That consciousness that is functioning within you, that is actually the basis for all of your experience, you have to give that up. So if you were to give up that consciousness, just imagine that for a moment. Contemplate this. If you were to actually trade me your awareness in exchange for all of your dreams come true, every possession you could possibly ever want, what would it be that is there to receive those things? How would you experience them without your awareness? Awareness is fundamental to every single experience. In fact, and again, the Pratibhigna Hridayam is an ancient text written by a man, a guru called Kshemaraj, uh, sometime in the, I think around 400 AD, early centuries of the common era. And he wrote that awareness, free and independent, is the cause of the performance of all things. So he looked at awareness as not just being the substratum through which we experience life, but actually the foundation upon which all experience is built and manifest from. Again, quantum physics points to this same reality. There have been a number of physicists that have put forth the same idea that without consciousness, nothing exists. In fact, it's the only reality. I think David Bohm said that. Max Planck, similar things. So based on their studies, based on their experiments that they performed, they came to this conclusion that reality is inseparable from consciousness and consciousness is inseparable from reality. You can't take the two out of the equation, which is completely opposite of Newtonian physics. Newtonian physics dissects everything and tries to eliminate the experimenter from the experiment, right? They try to make things as honest and as blind as they can be in their studies, creating controls and all kinds of things like that. But actually what quantum science proves is that you can never actually do that. I mean, it's it's fine to attempt to do it. And this is how we get a lot of our, you know, our current science and the way things function on the physical realm, physical realm. But on the quantum realm, it's different. Everything's turned upside down, turned on its head. And actually nothing is separate. But we don't experience the quantum realm. Most of us, most of the time, are experiencing the physical world in which everything is actually separate. Like I'm here, you're there watching. I'm in my time zone. You might be in a different time zone. I'm dressed in these clothes. You're dressed in some separate clothes. I might be a man. You might be a woman. My, I have a name, Koharlan. You have a different name. So all these things are different. There's all this differentiation. And the experience of this differentiation leads us to separation. And it seems to be an obvious fact. Of course, we're separate. Of course, we're not the same. I have different parents. I was born at a different time. My thoughts are my thoughts. My beliefs are my thoughts. My identity is my thought. It's created from my own mind, which is separate from your mind. But quantum physics says, no, that's not actually the case. Everything is just appearing in this moment. And it's all interrelated. It's constantly in flux. It's constantly changing. But there's no separation in it. And it's kind of like all contained within the same ultimate container of consciousness. So the interesting thing is the reality at the deepest level that we can understand. I mean, quantum physics has been said to be the most accurate science that we have in our current um, model, right? In our current model, quantum science is the most accurate, the most precise. So for a long time, we were operating on Newtonian physics, but now quantum physics comes along and says, no, no, no. 
that's very, very basic. I mean, that's kind of like, that's the world of appearances. We know things look like that and they function like that on a certain level. But if we look deeper, there's this whole hidden reality that's actually underlying the whole thing that you can't see with your eyes, but it is a fact nonetheless. And so in the same way, we can't see with our eyes that we are all connected. And so most of us feel very isolated. And so we work at creating experiences, relationships, beliefs, and goals and dreams. And much of this is to avoid this nagging sense of isolation that we are avoiding, right? We don't want to feel isolated. We don't want to feel separate. We want to feel connected. We want to feel love. We want to feel intimacy. And yet when we look around, when we go to bed at night, or when we're in the quiet of our own space, many times, many of us feel very, very separate and very isolated. And this brings about a great sense of suffering. And so again, a core issue that we all must face as human beings, this sense of separation that we seemingly were born into. But what if we weren't separate? Hmm. What if we actually weren't separate? Well, quantum physics says we're not. But like, what if we actually weren't and we could actually experience this connection, this interrelation, this eternal oneness that we all share? What if that were the case as it is, as far as we know, from our best science, what if that was actually the case? And what if we could experience it directly? What would it be like if you never had to feel alone again? If you never had to feel separate? If you never had to judge others? If you never experienced that, that self-judgment or that judgment from others? If you never operated out of fear because of someone being different. Maybe they look different. Maybe they act different. Maybe they wear different clothes. Maybe they hold different beliefs. Maybe they have a different political affiliation. And so this fear inside of you rises up and makes you want to either run or freeze or fight. And what if that was all based in bullshit? And yet this is how we were operating, creating this needless suffering on a seemingly endless continuum. What if that were so? And what if we woke up to that realization at a very, very deep level and began to experience our oneness and our connection? How would that change the way we experienced life in this moment? <sighs> How would that change the way we looked at others, at seemingly others? What about those people who've wronged us that we hold grudges against? What about those experiences we had where we suffered at the mercy of others and situations? And what if that was just all part of the show like when you go to a movie, you experience all of these things, the heights of emotion, ecstasy, fear, identification with the hero, anger at the enemy, hope, all of these emotions, all based in something that's not real. But then when we get out of the movie, we go back to our normal lives, we realize, ah, yeah, that was a cool movie. That was really neat. I got to feel all those things. It wasn't real. But when I was in it, I experienced it as real. And it produced all these changes in my chemistry, in my biology, in my mind. Maybe it even influences the way I look at the world and look at others, changes me some 
in some capacity. But even then, afterwards, we get out and we're like, oh, that was neat. That influenced me. I, I think differently now. I'm looking at things differently. But it wasn't real. It was just an experience. And now I can go back to my normal life in reality. And what if this life that we're living in were somehow akin to that? That we are in this experience having all of these emotions, feeling all of this separation, identifying with the hero in ourselves, or maybe the beggar in ourselves, or maybe the victim in ourselves, and seeing some others as allies and some as enemies, having all of these different experiences and different emotions coming up. And it seems so real when we're here going through it. And then one day we walk out of the theater and recognize, wow, that was all a dream. That was all a dream. And maybe for some of us, it was a very pleasant dream, a wonderful dream, an incredible movie that inspired us, connected us, made us think differently see things differently. And for many of us, it was a horrible dream, a horrible movie. You ever watched a movie and just sickened you? No desire to experience that. I remember one time, it's funny, I watched this movie called Train Spotting back in my 20s. And my memory of it was that it was a really cool, I was into these like violent thrillers and like, you know, I think Reservoir Dogs had just come out not too long before that. Quentin Tarantino was just coming on the scene. And I watched this movie and then like, I don't know, five or seven years later, I had gone through an entirely, an entire transformation in my being. And I was hanging out with my girlfriend at the time and we were picking some movies to watch for the weekend or something. I think this was back when like Blockbuster was around and got this movie. I was like, oh, wait, train spotting. I remember this is this is really cool. It's like one of those like cult movies, you know, I remember it being like kind of funny and dangerous and things like that. So we rented it again or I rented it again. We watched it together and I was fucking sickened by this movie. I was in such a different state. I was a completely different person when I watched it and it was horrible. I remember some of the scenes like made me want to vomit. And I, I couldn't find a single character that I felt was a hero that I felt connected to in that way that I really wanted to win. It was like sickening to me. And so just an example of how when we change internally, our experience of the movies of life is radically different. And when we change in the way as to we stop identifying with a separate character, and this can happen and it does happen, sometimes only glimpses of it happen, sometimes in a very high state, sometimes on drugs, sometimes in meditation, sometimes on the dance floor, and you forget yourself, you forget your identity, or you're just so engrossed in the moment, in the richness of the experience, that it's all experience. And it's just consciousness, baby, having an experience. So again, I invite you to contemplate this. Think of all the ways in which you see yourself as separate. Maybe you see yourself as a victim. Maybe you see yourself as fighting your way through life, as having to overcome all of your enemies, whether they're people, or situations, challenges, or maybe it's just ghosts of your own past trying to come back and haunt you, the fears, the guilt, the shame. And what would it be like to recognize that all of that was just part of the show, that none of us are actually separate? We're all in this thing together, eternally linked. 
Even the ones that you hate the most, despise the most, those that have victimized you, or those that you've wronged, hurt, created suffering for. And what if none of that was real on the deepest level, that it was an experience, sure, it happened, but that we don't have to live in that state of separation, creating that suffering for ourselves, creating this story of being against someone, of having enemies? What if all of that was just made up? And what if you were woken to that realization? What if that were possible? How would that change your life? How would that change your experience of life? The way that you see things, the way that you see the current state that the world is in and what's possible for our future. Just things to contemplate in this seventh of 100 live videos, seven of eight core issues. So I've given you up to seven. Tomorrow we're gonna to be stu uh, studying the eighth one. So stay tuned for that. And let me know in the comments if you have any ideas around this, if you have any thoughts you'd like to share. Maybe you had an experience of this oneness or maybe you're in absolute defiance of everything I've been saying. Either way, I'm, I'm interested curious. I'm not going to make you wrong for having an opinion. I'm, I'm actually inviting you to inquire into this experience for yourself. And I'd love to hear about what yours is, if you would like to share it. So until then, my friends, thank you so much for watching. All 8 billion of you out there, potentially, who could see this. All of you separate from me. All of you living your own lives in your own spaces, radically different, completely disconnected, or is it? So thank you again. Much love going out to you. Appreciate you wherever, whomever you are. And I'll see you soon on another video.